Hi, Ian Roberts, and welcome to the Laboratory of the Painting Process. So these last weeks we've been talking about composition, both structure and how we cloak that, cloak that structure in color shapes. And today I wanted to talk about something else, something deeper we could say, which is our voice or our vision. Because, you know, we use the skills that we develop and put them together in a composition in order to express something, to articulate something. And so we need to come to terms with that and how we're going to give expression to it. So I thought it'd be useful to talk about that today. So today I wanted to talk about creativity or the authenticity of our voice. You know, when we talk about a medium, you know, these are the parts like oil or watercolor. For some reason, we're attracted to some things more than other. And we need to gain certain skills in order to do that. And then in subject matter, you know, we might be portraits or it might be landscapes, but we're drawn to that too for some reason. And then the technique, the way we want to do it, maybe it's a very careful rendering technique or a more looser uh, a la prima, but each, in each one of those, we're attracted personally to some aspect of it. And they each require skills or craft in order to get better at and so that we can make use of it. But they all come together really with composition because that's really the glue. I mean, the way I'm defining composition, not just sort of a few marks that indicate a structure but a, um, on a painting, but composition is like the glue that puts it all together. And what's interesting is the word art comes from an Indo-European -Euro word Ars, that means to join together. It's interesting, isn't it? And so what we're doing with composition is joining together all the parts into one coherent whole. But why? Because we have something to say. We have a voice. We have a vision. I mean, it, sorry. It may not be very clear what that vision is, but we know it's there and we're striving towards it. And so this is really the reason why we're making art. And so if we get all the parts together and put it into a coherent whole, we can give expression to our authenticity. But what's interesting is if we lack certain skills or we don't put enough attention onto how they're all going to be joined together, we find that there is a gap in how we articulate what we have to say, and the AR there is the same root as ours actually, and then we find that what we're trying, the vision we're trying to give, we don't articulate well. The skills and the putting together of all the parts allows us to articulate our vision. And note I'm not talking about, because I know so many students are saying, oh, I want to find my style. And all I can tell you is that if you put 12, if you're teaching a workshop and you put 12 students saying, okay, go paint that, you see 12 entirely different styles of painting. That's like our calligraphy. It just sort of takes care of itself. Coming to terms with our vision and our authenticity, that takes some time and attention. But we need to develop skills, we need to put them together, and we need to focus on what it is we're really wanting to say. So we'll come back to this topic from time to time because I think it is fundamental and we do need to talk about it. What is our vision and what is our voice? as artists, because ultimately that's what art is all about, really. So I'd like to talk now about a painting by Fairfield Porter. He did the painting in 1962. It's called Portrait of Donald Schrader. Uh, Porter died in 1975. And although he was painting in a very kind of representational style, fairly uh, crude in a way, just kind of putting down shapes, this particular painting, I love it. I just think it's incredibly well done. But also, he was a very good art critic in terms of all the other major movements that were going on during the 50s and 60s. So he was very plugged into the art scene. He just happened to continue with a very simple representational style throughout that whole time. So I think you'll like this image. I love this painting. I mean, one of the things about it is in a way it's painted so simply 
And yet there is such a strong sense of the personality of this guy, the emotional quality to it. I mean, I sort of feel I know exactly what he's thinking about. And yet you see how simply he's painted it. I mean, the jacket is three values, one, two, and an occasional third one there. The hair, two values, one, two. And this one's exactly the same as the background. The face, two values, one, two, with just one or two touches that add to that. And yet, also just in terms, also just in terms of color, it's just, there's hardly any color at all. You know, this sort of ochery gray, maybe raw umber, maybe black and white, and these tiny little touches of yellow, just one or two of them out here. And look at the pants. I mean, the pants are just completely lost. It's only because it crosses the, the uh, chair that we know there's a leg there at all. It's exactly the same value as the background. You can see here that he's just painting in color shapes. You know, shape by shape by shape by shape by shape, one after the other, and it all hangs together, painted very simply, but just all hangs together in one coherent whole. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.